Hello guys, so we're heading on to 4.3. This is the second last video for this paper and it's where we're looking at probability. Now, often when students see probability, they're like, well, this is where I lose all my marks, makes no sense. But let's just look at the scenario and see whether we can reason it out, okay? And I bet we can. And I think that if you if you start drawing probability, like I start drawing it here to help yourself visualize what's happening, it's a lot easier to understand. Okay, so let's read the scenario. Apologies that my paper's a bit wet. I dropped tea on it by mistake. So let's go. For quality control purposes, containers A, B, and C are randomly checked for defective TVs. Okay, so I've drawn these containers. There's A, there's B, there's C. I granted my drawings are not the greatest, but that is what I've done. Okay, then it says, if one in every 60 TVs is defective and the probability of finding a defective TV in any of the containers is equally likely, right? So it's not saying all the defective TVs are put into C or in A or in B. It's saying basically the defective TVs, you're equally likely to find one in A, B, and C. Right, okay? Then it says determine the probability of picking a defective TV in container A. So now the probability, right? I'm going to say the probability of D, probability of def, right, of defective is 1 in 60. They literally say that to us. If 1 in every 60. So that's the probability of being defective. But what is the probability of choosing container A? Well, it's 1 in 3 right? Because there's three different containers I could choose from, but I'm only choosing, the, they want us to find the probability of picking a defective TV in container A. So defective TV would just be 1 over 60, but they said in container A. So it is 1 over 3. So it's saying both of those things have to happen, right? And remember what I said in the previous video on probability, if you've watched that one, I said when things have to happen together, right? They have to happen together. It's like a big and, we have to times the two probabilities, okay? So we times the probability of defective times by the probability of choosing container A. So we put that into our calculator. Again, I know I say this a million times, but just make sure you type it in correctly, guys. You really don't want to be losing marks for that. Okay, so it's one over 180. So you can put this into a decimal form if you want, but it's like kind of a weird one to write out because it's really small. Okay, um, and remember with probability, right? When you talk about probability, you should always be between zero and one. Okay, you can, you can also be at zero. You can, the probability of zero means it will never happen. And the probability of one means it definitely will happen, right? So, but you have to be in that interval. You can't be getting a negative probability or a probability of greater than one. Like, how can a probability, how can the chances of something happening be greater than certain? Okay, and we can see here, because this is a fraction, right? It might be a little bit difficult for you to visualize, but one over 180, right? It is smaller than one. Okay, so we know that our probability at least makes sense in the context of probability as a whole, okay? And because we went through the scenario and we broke it down, right? It's now a little bit easier to access, okay? Do you see how I went about that? Now, let's go into the next probability question because maybe this one is a little bit more challenging. It says, all TVs in container B, so we in our container B here, I'm just gonna put a circle around container B, okay? have been checked and no defective TVs have been found, right? So B is the container to B, right? Nothing's defective there, okay? But it says, if container A is now checked, will the probability of finding a defective TV in container C increase, decrease, or remain the same? Justify your answer with a calculation. Okay, so this is an interesting one, right? Because we still know that the probability of a TV being defective is one in 60, right? We know that, okay? But now we're taking B out of the scenario because B has already been checked, right? So the reason I put X there is because we're taking it out. We're taking it out. It's no longer in the scenario. What is left is just A and C, right? So there's only two options you can choose from the containers. You can either choose A or you choose C, okay? So when it says here, um, Will the probability of finding a defective TV in container C increase, decrease, or remain the same, right? So they say basically they finished checking B, they're now moving on to A, and then they'll move on to C. And they're saying, having knowing that B is non-defective, and B is like, is like your, your top student, right? B is doing really well. There's, there, there's not getting anything, there's nothing wrong with B. 
okay? But now it's just A and C, okay? So it's saying, if we only have A and C, what is the probability now that we find a defective TB in container C? So the probability of choosing, right, of choosing C is now gonna be one over two, okay? Remember, the first one for choosing A was one over three because there were three options. But now there's only two options because B is taken out of the whole equation, okay? So what is our probability gonna be here? It's gonna be one over 60 times one over two, right? Which equals one over 120. Okay, if you don't trust me, put it in your calculator. Now tell me, all right? Has the probability increased or decreased, right? And if you don't know how to do this, you can do it on your calculator if you want to, but you should know, right, that if the denominator, and this, that means the number at the bottom of a fraction, decreases, okay, it means that the fraction gets bigger, okay? Let me just quickly show you that, right? So if I say one over two, that means half, right? That means it's the same as a half. You can check on your calculator if you don't believe me. If I say one over four, it is 0 0.25. So you see my denominator has gone up. Therefore, this value has gone down. Okay, that's a little relationship I want you to remember. Okay, so here, because my denominator has gone down, right, my probability has increased. Okay, my probability is just the decimal version of this, right? This is actually still a probability. Okay, so because my denominator has gone down, we know that this probability is larger, or this fraction is larger than the fraction we got previously. Therefore, we say the probability increases, right, that you will find something defective in container C. So you can say probability increases. Okay, so this is sometimes quite a difficult one to wrap your head around but again that's why i say try to visualize it try to draw it use colors if you want to and and think about the relationships that you're actually trying to represent okay i hope that was helpful we're now going to move on to our very last question for this paper okay